in this video, we're gonna be talking about filters. Filters are kind of hidden. They're not, uh, you'll see in the properties panel, we have a few tabs. We have tool, we have object, we have frame, and we have doc. Now doc will be all your document properties when you initially start a document. Things like the width, the height, the stage color, the frames per second, things like that. Frame is a little bit different. It's for everything that's in the current frame. And you can see here that I have sound. We can control sound. Then we have color effects, we have blend, and we have filters. So we're gonna take a look at filters here. So filters, uh, if I click on this little plus symbol, I have this ring object selected. Uh, you can see that we have a few different filters. We have drop shadow, blur, glow, bevel, gradient glow, gradient bevel, and adjust color. So this is kind of like the, um, uh, the styles that you have inside of Photoshop for layers, layer styles. So if I choose drop shadow here, for example, it gives me a basic drop shadow. Let's say that I want it only to go down. So I'm going to unlock this. I'm going to hit this and I'm going to make the blur 10. And then uh, the distance, I'm going to make that 10 also. And then I can increase or decrease the strength. I'm going to decrease the strength. And then there's a quality drop down here for a high, medium, or low. So depending on the file size that you want, you can set this to whatever you want it to be. Then we have these checkboxes here to knock out. So it'll take out the original object and only show the drop shadow. Uh, we can uh, convert this, invert this into an inner shadow or to hide the object completely and just show the shadow. So a couple of cool things you can do there with drop shadows. Now, the way that filters work also is that you can use them in combination with each other. So I can have a filter effect and I can add other effects as well. Like so for example, if I wanted to add a blur effect. So now I have blur and I can increase the blur distance. And notice that it's only blurring this object on this layer. It's not affecting this object and it's only affecting what's in this particular frame. Now these filters can be animated, but you can't animate them with the motion tween. You have to do it with a classic tween. So for example, I'm gonna take this down to zero for both the, the blur X and the blur Y. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna to go to frame 25 and I'm gonna hit F6 to create a keyframe. I have the same object. And if I go to frame, now I'm on a new frame, but I still have the carried over filter properties. So I'll just increase the blur value by a lot more. And I'm only doing this on the X axis. You can see that I get kind of this effect. And now I want to animate this. So if I go back to frame one, it's not blurred. If I go to frame 25, it is blurred. So in between, I can right click or control click and choose create classic tween. And what that will do is it'll animate that filter. So it goes from zero to completely blurred. And that's how you can animate filters. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other filters here. So, um, so I have this other object on this layer. I'm gonna go to frame. And again, here's the filters. And what else do we have? We have bevel. So it's going to create kind of this bevel effect. So we can increase that, make it look, maybe you have an idea you want to make it look more like a button or something like that. So uh, we can increase or decrease the strength of that. We can change the angle. Um, you can change the shadow and also the distance. And then there's different types of bevels. So we have a full bevel, we have an outer bevel, and an inner bevel. Inner bevel is probably what we're going to want to use. And again, we have the quality setting. So maybe I'll pull this back down a bit. And the blur Y and the blur X. The less blur there is, the more refined the shape is going to be. The more blur there is, the less refined the shape is going to be. Now with all these filters, you also have two controls here. You can disable or enable the filter. And then if you want to get rid of it, you can cl click the delete filter um, button. 
So we took a look at um, blur, drop shadow, and bevel. There's also different glows. There's a gradient glow and a glow. Glow is going to create a glow effect that surrounds the object. And I can increase or decrease that. By, let me undo that. And by clicking this little lock pad, I can increase that blur amount on both ends. And again, I want to change this to high. And you notice that I'm getting this halo effect around here is just what we kind of want. Maybe I make it a different color. Okay, so you get kind of like this glow effect. And again, so like if this was a sun, you can make it radiate, you can pulse that, and you can do that with animation. Let me just remove this. You also have gradient glow, and then there's different gradients that you can apply here, and this gradient stops. Again, you probably want to set that quality to high. Make sure this is locked. And you can set the distance. It seems like a smoother glow effect with gradient glow. And then you also have a gradient bevel. So it's kind of like the bevel effect. But again, um, using a gradient to do this. And you can choose where you want these gradient colors to sit and set the quality. And then there's also adjust color, which is kind of like what we saw before um, with the other properties that are on the object itself, but this one is in the filters. So those are filters in Adobe Animate, and they're kind of limited, um, but they have their uses. Um, and when you're animating them, remember that you have to use classic tweens and you have to use um, keyframes in order to animate those properties. So that is filters.